more clean up, the more scattered radiation you're going to have. Right? Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. All right, it is going to be measuring mass per unit area. So this is not information that you're going to have with your grid, but it's information that you, you might want to have it. You might want to understand it. Okay. Um, all right, so high ratio, low frequency grids, okay, they tend to have the highest lead content. Okay, why? Because you have very thick lines, right? High ratio, low frequency grids, right? Low frequency is telling you that the lead lines are going to be very thin. Yes? Okay, so typically it is the one. That's why it's a 10, 10 to. It doesn't necessarily have to be because you can tweak this in many different ways, but put it under line 10. So when you're studying, you can see that it's. That it's hmm? uh, so tend to have the highest lead content. Oh, okay. right. That part should not. Okay. We have one. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Got it? Uh, yeah. That is the last. All right. Here we go. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe explain more because maybe I lost. Uh, why high ratio uh, and low frequency grid is tend to high is less content. Sorry. <laughs> Highest lead content? Why? Yeah, because if you think about it, okay, a high ratio grid is telling you two things. A high ratio grid is telling you is either the lead strips are going to be thick or they are tall. Okay. And in either case, either you make them thicker or you make them taller, you're going to put more lead on it, right? Mm -hmm. And that's why. And low frequency grids is telling you that you're going to have wide uh, that you're going to have the lead strips are going to be thick okay because when you have a high frequency grid you have very thin lines right okay so that's what it means they tend to have uh, the highest lead content and this means high radio how about you go hand by hand with the low no, frequency no, 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 no. that's <laughs> that's why i said there are going to be exceptions of how the, the, the grid is manufactured, that's why it's a 10 to have. 10 means most likely. Okay. That, that's what this is saying. Okay. Yeah. So low frequency means that the lines are thinner, or did you say thicker as well? Thinner. Thinner. Uh, low fre I'm sorry, the low, fre low frequency thicker. thick, thick lines. So then high ratio is the same too? Because right now you just said high thick lines. No, not ratio? necessarily. Because oh. say you can have very thin lines. But how about if they are tall? Oh, so with the high ratio, it could be but, 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 Listen to me for a second. Oh. All right, you can have you can have a low uh, you can have a high frequency grid, which is telling you what. High, don't look at the ratio. Just a high frequency grid is saying what. I would say thin. Exactly. Okay. Now, oh, okay. wait, 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 not done yet. Okay, now, let me know when you're done. Uh -huh. I'll wait for you. Okay, I'm done. All right, the height ratio, what, ignore the high frequency. What is the height ratio saying? Uh, what, that it's thicker, Depth. thicker in the lead strips Sheesh. and height? Huh? That it's thicker in the lead strips? concentrate strip? because someone else is making things. <laughs> look at you. All right, what, what did you say? I'm sorry. Oh, when you say high ratio, I'm thinking thicker lead lines. Lead lines, okay. Oh, okay. All right, however, you can have a high, a high ratio oh. and high frequency by keeping the same thickness but increasing the height, okay, which will give you a higher ratio and you could have a high frequency grid. So you can have both. Oh, okay. Okay, make sense? Yes. Okay, so that's what I said, tends to have. Okay. Because you can change it in different ways. Okay. okay. All right, everybody. Here we go. So, 
When we think of grids, in general, what you're going to have lead content is greater in a grid with a high duration low frequency. I told you that. As lead content increases, the removal of the scatter radiation increases, and therefore contrast increases. I told you that before, up to this point. All I'm adding to what a concepts that I have been throwing at you before is this. Therefore, contrast will increase. Why does contrast increase? Rachel, Kreider, why does contrast increase? As lead content is um, more lead. Uh, well, if there's no grid lines, it would affect. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's, it's hard to think about it. Okay, Christina Kasansky, what do you think? Um, and I'm sorry I said your full name, but it sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> so the lead will create a higher ratio of photoelectric interactions. So there's less no, content. Let's not get there yet. Just, just think of as lead content increases, removal of the scatter radiation increases, and therefore contrast increases. Why is the contrast increasing? Because there's less scatter. Why? Because there's less content interactions. Okay. Why? It's absorbed by the lead. Oh, there okay. It's absorbed by the lead. <laughs> yeah. All right. Now, let me ask you this. What happens to the density? Less. Less. Uh, less you Decreases. Decreases. Okay. Density will decrease. Why? Because you're removing exposure. a scatter. Okay, and the scatter is, is, is adding exposure, is adding grayness to your image. See how that works? Mm -hmm. It's the same thing, it's the same concept that happened when you're thinking of collimation, right? What happens when you collimate? Less a scatter, contrast goes up, density goes down. The same thing happens here, okay? In this case, the higher the lead content, in which grids are going to have a higher lead content? Which grids have a higher lead content? Yeah. High, frequency high frequency uh, Nope. High, high ratio. High low frequency. frequency. Low frequency will have the higher lead content. Yeah. All right? And so they are going to clean up the most the scatter. So you're going to have less density and you're going to have a higher contrast. Following me there? Okay, and so you have to compensate when you're using grids. You have to compensate with your technical factors going up. And so patient exposure will go up. Yeah. So if you did have high ratio, high frequency, would that be even more? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, but they just don't but generally it all depends. do that? It all depends on the ratio. Okay. It all depends on the ratio. Okay. Oh, the ratio is the most important. Okay, all depend no, I'm not saying it's the most important. No. It's just a two, remember, and I go back to the purpose, okay? The purpose of letting you know what is the grid ratio is so you know how much lead content there is because the more lead you have, the more clean up you have. Grid frequency is used for what? Lines. lines, exactly, the number of lines. And so the higher the ratio, the less grid lines you will see. That means that they are thinner lines. So two different purposes. One is to absorb a scatter. One is there to show you less lines. Okay? All right, so as lead content increases, removal of the scatter radiation increases, okay? And therefore, okay, uh, contrast increases. In general, right, we tend to have, it's more common to have this type of lead content, high lead content on high ratio grid and finish up. And low frequency grids. Thank you. Um, you say uh, when we uh, yield a grid, we have a to compensate the technique and yes. how many percent we can We'll get to that. Not right now. We'll, we will. Yeah. We'll get to that part.
All right. Are we okay with that? This part. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. So grid. Let's just study grid patterns. There are different grid patterns. Okay. First, we study the crisscross or uh, cross-hatch grids. This type, right? This are. This is the first grids were this type. Remember, they were uh, invented by uh, what was his name? Bucky. Bucky. Okay, Doctor Bucky. All right. And, and then Potter came out and said, well, it's too complicated because you don't have, you know, you need to angle when you do x-rays. You know, how about if you're doing, a, I don't know, an L5 is one and you need to angle, or what about if the sacrum? How about if you're doing, I don't know, TMJs or the skull, and you're doing a water. You know, this type of grid is going, you're gonna have grid cut off. And so he designed this, and besides he uh, also designed this, okay? So in general, you have in general you have two types of grids, crisscross and linear grids. Okay, so once again, easier to work with linear grids. However, linear grids you have two types: you have parallel and you have folds. Parallel grids are grid lines are straight. Okay, focus grids, on the other hand, they have an angle. They have an angle that it will match. So when you look at it, if we do a cross section here of our grid, you're gonna have that as the grid, as you move from the center to the outside, you're gonna have an angle on those grids, on those grid lines. And those grid lines, match the angle they have here this angle that you have here and here this angle here matches the angle the divergence of the beam okay think about it if you have a straight lines like this then your your beam look this is primary beam is going to hit grid lines so when you have it like this, then it's gonna go right through it if it matches perfectly. And this is why, also another very important piece of information that you have in the back of your grid is your distance, your focal distance, okay? Each grid, each uh, focal grid is designed, okay, to work a very specific distances. This grid, this one in particular, you can use it at the focal range, the focal distance that you can use it is 34 to 44 inches. Meaning, if you have, if you're between those two, that distance, 34 to 44, it will work fine. Anything outside that range, you're gonna have grid cut out. Your divergence is gonna hit grid lines. Make sense? Okay, so it, it's important. That's another important piece of information you have here. Many times technologists forget about that. Okay, you, you have no idea how many times I've been called to the operating room. They call me and doctors is all upset, the tech doesn't know what to do. You go up and you're asking me, well, what's going on? And you can see grid lines. And you say, grid cut off. You're going, well, what was your technique? You know, you start with the common. And then the most common thing is techs will bring the wrong grid and they're using the wrong distance for that grid. Common. You know, that it might be a grid that works at 44 inches and they are at 60. It's not gonna work, okay? It's not gonna work. And so it's, it's, it's something that you have to keep in the back of your mind. That you have to use it within that distance. If you don't, you're gonna have problems, okay? All right. So, are we good with that? All right. So, so they work very well, but you have to work at a specific distance. Yes, Karen? That, that distance is called a focal distance? Yes. You know? All right, crisscross or crotch hat hatch grids, they have uh, horizontal lead strips, okay? It has vertical lead strips, okay? And the primary beam must be centered perpendicular to the grid. If you have a slight angle, you're gonna have grid cut off in different ways. So it has to match perfectly, it has to be centered. So this type of cross hatch grids are used mainly for dedicated extra units. Dedicated meaning that they are only gonna work, say for example, you have a dedicated chest unit where you're not gonna be changing your distance, where you're not gonna be changing angles, you only use it to do chest x-rays. 
then it, they work really well. If you're gonna be doing a variety of things, then you have to you have to remember as a technology, you have to remember to switch your grids. An example, those of you at Sequoia, you have seen that. Uh, that if you're using room 11, you have to change your grid, right? There is a grid that works at 40 and there is a grid that works at 72. If you forget to change it, the machine will remind you, but you can override it. But it will be, a, you will, you'll end up with grid lines and grid cutoff if you use the wrong, the wrong uh, grid. Also, for those of you at Sequoia, room nine, that grid is designed to only work, uh, is good for 40 inches. It's not, that grid is not designed to work at 72. The one in the table. The one, the upright button. The upright button. The upright button. Text, forget that, but that grid is, is good to work at 40, or 36 and 44. You try to do a chest x-ray, you're gonna have grid cut off on the sides. Yeah? No one's ever told me that. Yeah, well, okay. Yeah. yeah, so it's important to keep in mind those things like that. All right, grids must be remain flat. If you have an angle, think about it. If you're not matching your divergence, the divergence of the beam is not perfectly matching, then you're gonna have grid cut off. And so it has to be perpendicular, more than flat change that to perpendicular to the beam. The grid and the beam, they have to be perpendicular, otherwise you end up with a uh, grid cut off. All right, let's stop here. And Friday, we're gonna do our lab. I think we're gonna be able to uh, finish up the session, so.